Um, my name is Katie Estel, and um, I'm so excited to be here with Cindy. I'll try Hi, to... everybody. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> we, uh, my husband and I, the big guy up there, <laughs> uh, we just graduated from four years of marriage counseling, and Cindy's books was, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's all God for sure. But um, I went to the bookstore, and I found Cindy's book, and it was amazing. And closer. so I would just um, encourage you there all you to... <laughs> She's so, um, she doesn't like the microphone like I'm I nervous, do. I'm nervous, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, just encourage you, whatever um, struggles you might be having in your marriage, your story may not be the same as hers, but I would definitely encourage you to read her books because there is a lot of wisdom and God has really used her story um, in my life and I know other people, some of friends as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm so glad she's here. <laughs> okay. Um, I got a lot of great questions. Thank you, ladies. Uh, the first question is... Um, Cindy, uh, what, what is your friend system like? You're, do you have, um, do, uh, do you have to distance yourself from negative advice and how is your support system with friends? Like when everything happened? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's so important. Like who's in your circle? Um, they're going to be people with their opinions and I would say that you really need to have the people around you who are they're going to help steer you. Biblical counselors are important. Just God, you know those people that are probably not going to be like, well, you just need to leave him or you need to quit that job or whatever. You need to find people go help. What's, what do you think? And help you determine the next step. So I did have to kind of be careful. We lost um, one couple friend who we weren't living in the same town, but we had long history with them. We have since reconnected with them, but we did lose it for a time because they felt like they needed to be in our lives. They felt like they needed to tell me I needed to walk away. And so we had um, my pastor, Craig Groeschel, and his wife, um, and then another couple, Jim and Beth Kuykendall, who actually walked us through and kind of, kind of cocooned us for a season until we were a little stronger so, but again, we were in a new town, six weeks in a new town. So all my friends, Anna Maria, nobody was by me. So it wasn't like I could just drive over to someone's house. I didn't know anybody. Wow. Well, yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's see what we have. Uh, do you have any scriptures that you would recommend for a son or daughter to help, um, help them stay pure and, uh, before marriage? All the scriptures, yeah. <laughs> or just a couple offhand that you might be able to recommend. You know, I think of, I think First Corinthians ten twenty three might be it. You can look it up, but it's the one that says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I mean that kind of. So I always think about like um, there are things that we we want to do, or we okay, I could do that, but is that really going to be beneficial? And when I say I can do that, I'm not saying that sex before marriage is is a good choice. If you know when you're not obviously. Uh, whether you're young or an adult, but my point is just, you know, think about, is that, is that the choice you really want to make? You, we have to make choices that are going to have, we've got to think about the longer consequences. Unfortunately, I did not wait until I was married, so there was a lot of baggage that I kind of had to deal with, um, but we have, we've dealt with it, and, you know, so. Yes, thank you. And don't <laughs> lay down with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Yes. Don't go <laughs> horizontal. I know things can still happen vertical, but it is more difficult. That's just... <laughs> Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> Next question. Okay. <laughs> um, what is the greatest challenge of motherhood, and how do you overcome that? Mm, all the children. The problem with parenting is the children. Um... <laughs> I will say that I've always felt, and I'm not very, acting very dignified right now because I'm labeling myself, but my struggle, let me just say that, I've always felt like I'm a better wife than I am a mom. And I know some of you may feel I'm a better mother than I'm a wife, whatever you're, where you are, but I just always felt like I could do married marriage better. And then my kids came along and I wanted them and I loved them, but I'm just so afraid I'm gonna mess them all up. And so, what was the question? Uh, what is the greatest challenge of motherhood? Um, letting go. I mean, you have to really, this is a crazy thought, but from the moment they're born, you have to begin the process of letting go. 
letting go of when they're two, letting them choose their, you know, do you want this or this? Or when they're four, letting them dress in every shade of orange that there is. And you just have to be okay that they're learning and growing. And so letting go. Um, also, when they became teenagers, and I'm a mom of boys, so it was a little different. I don't know how it is with girls, but you have to shift from parenting to coaching, and you have to make that shift. And that was difficult. So I would coach in one moment. I was like, get over here right now. You know, and I was like, okay, that's not, I'm parenting coaching. So, yeah, lots of uh, fun parenting joys. <laughs> but I'm going to be a grandmother soon, and I hear that that is the reward. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to those days, too. <laughs> uh, what was the hardest part of forgiving your husband? The memories. The images. Thankfully, my husband, um, he never, I forgot to mention this part. He, it all stemmed from a pornography addiction for him. So he didn't have an inappropriate relationship with a friend or a coworker. It was anything like that. He met people online. And so um, I didn't know anybody, which was a good thing, except that I can still imagine another woman. So that was just beginning the process of all the healing and becoming intimate again eventually. And um, it was a journey. And so I would say when the, um, a memory or seeing something in the grocery store that reminded me of something and then I triggered a pain and, you know, kind of PTSD basically before there really, before, I think before there was that label and um, just forgiving along the way. If you haven't read or listened to Lisa Turker's latest book called Forgiving What You Can't Forget, I highly recommend it if that's, I mean, it's beneficial for anyone, whether you, whatever you've been through. So she talks about forgiveness, you, you forgive the act or whatever that situation is that caused you pain. And then you have to learn the process of forgiving the different triggers and the situations along the way. So it's, it's um, yeah, that's it, memories. I can imagine. Um, <clears throat> Amber Dickey asked, um, who was the author of the book that you recommended, Unoffendable? <laughs> Brant Hansen. Okay. I think he was like a radio personality. He's got a great voice because I'm an auto, auto. By the way, four years ago, I realized I knew I've always been an auditory learner, but I'd never understood why I hated to read. <laughs> I'm an author. I hate to read because I can't comprehend. And then I started listening to audio books. My life is different now, so I'm an auditory learner. <laughs> That's just extra. Y'all didn't pay for that. <laughs> well, it's nice because you can multitask, too. You can be doing stuff and listening. Yeah. Um, okay, I know you stayed, and um, I didn't. So uh, will I ever stop wondering if I gave up too soon? I don't know. Um, but I don't want you to go there. You, um, you, the choice has been made. You know, God still has good plans for you. He still has something for your future. Um, take those thoughts captive. Don't entertain them. Um, that's all I would say because I don't want you to live in that place of being just weighed down. We all make mistakes. Not saying it was, it may not have been a mistake. It may have been a good decision or it may have been the right decision for where you were because um, I don't know your situation. So just take that thought captive and I say, okay, God, this is done. What, what do you want for me? Now? What do you want me to do next? Where, because you've got a totally different ministry than I do. You can minister to the women who didn't stay. That's just as powerful. Thank you. Was it difficult to talk with your children about what happened in your marriage? So my youngest, or my oldest, was th th almost three when everything came out. So they don't know life without their brother, uh, their, their you know, half-brother, or Jack is his name. In the book, it's Ben, but I can tell y'all. Y'all aren't going to go be like, hey, city bills, stuff. No. Uh, his name is Jack. And so everybody... <laughs> I'm such a dork. I really do know that I am. But everybody, um, everybody just, it was just, he was just built into the family. So it's not like he, they were 14 teenagers and, or they were teenagers and I didn't have to come and tell them what their dad did. So, um, but I do want to tell you this story. It's in my book. So um, 
my youngest, no, I keep saying my youngest, my oldest was, I think, eight or nine. And he, well, he was, when, when Jack was born, he was three and a half. And Jack started coming to us like a year later. And so, like Noah's four and a half to five. And he's smart, like he's a smart kid. And he would always say, I don't understand why he's daddy's son, but he, you're not his mommy. And we would just say, um, I know, I know it's so hard to understand, but one day we will tell you, but right now it's just too hard to explain, and I don't think you're ready to hear it. So we, we feel like it was very age-appropriate. We, we kept age-appropriate, you know, in mind. And so Chris had told him about the birds and the bees somewhere along the way because he learned some things on the school bus, and I thought, it's time. we got to talk to that boy. <laughs> um, this was before homeschooling, and um, Chris... He could, but Chris told him, and then I remember one day we were, he was going outside to play with his brother, Seth, who's the youngest, and he, he said, Mom, I know how Jack is dad's son and not your son. I said, okay. And he said, Dad has two wives. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I called Chris. I'm like, babe, tonight's the night. You got to tell him what happened. <laughs> And again, age appropriate, explained some things, you know, I mean, how much can a nine-year-old understand? But we just felt like honesty was our best thing because Jack's in our life. I'm writing a book. At this time, I think I was, no, I hadn't written, I hadn't finished writing the book yet. But anyway, so he told him and he, um, Chris was crying and he said, I just want you to know, I'm so sorry I hurt your mom like that. I wish, I wish I'd never hurt her. I wish that never happened. And Noah is his name. He said, don't say that, because then we wouldn't have Jack. And so, so God just um, has really wrapped our story beautifully, even through the mess and the pain, because there's still mess and pain. Jack's not always making the best choices, and there's still, there's still some mess, but. Yeah. Thank you. Her phone went to sleep real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Tina asked, how much impact has sharing your story had on your healing process? Oh, that is the best question. It has, you guys don't even know the healing that happens when you minister from a place that was once great pain. So 1 Corinthians 3 through 4, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can therefore comfort others when they're in their troubles. I just kind of paraphrase that. But you guys, that has been my everything in this story because I thought, well, it didn't take me out. I'm going to help someone else. And I never saw anything coming like what I get to do now. I never saw it coming, but I'm telling you, Every time I am pouring into a woman or Chris and I are ministering to a couple, more healing. I, mean, I feel pretty healed. Like, I'm, I'm pretty healed. I don't really even know how to, if there's more healing. But if there's like 0.1% that's not healed, it got healed today. You know, so like every time, and I remember the first time we talked to a couple, it was probably three years after his confession, and we wept. We wept when they left our house. We just cried because our deepest pain was able to deposit hope into them. And it was just us telling our story. And that's why I always say that, you know, I'm not a counselor. I'm just telling my story and I'm offering some insight from someone who has been on that road. And you all have roads you've walked and you can offer insight for whatever road you, you, you're going to journey on. I love how God can use our pain and to oh. help someone else. Tears aren't wasted. It can either, our pain can bury us or build us. And yeah. I just chose to let God build me. Yes. It was hard, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, Audrey asked where she, can she purchase your book? Amazon.com, mm -hmm. probably. Uh, there may be still some copies. I brought some. I don't know how many are left, but um, I didn't have a ton. But it's, you can probably get it from Amazon Live by tomorrow. <laughs> but. Um, okay, I have, this is a great question. How hard is it to pull off looking 25 at 50? <laughs> I need to give you some money. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. I, um, I actually have a secret. Um, if you're talking about my peaches and cream complexion, if that's what you're talking about. I used coconut oil on my face growing up because I have really dry skin. So if you're really dry skin, that might be it. But now I use Arbonne products. So. 
Thank you. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Con todo mi corazón. That was for you, babe. <laughs> okay, and how did your husband work on forgiving himself? Mm. He wept a lot in those early days, you guys. I remember walking into the kitchen one night. He had just gotten off the phone with his dad, and he was just crying his eyes out, just having to tell his dad, and his dad um, met him with such grace and such kindness. Um, but he, um, those 18 months that he worked at Home Depot, he, um, if you've never heard of Neil T. Anderson, he's an amazing author. He's written Victory Over the Darkness, the Bondage Breaker, I think some, uh, plenty of other ones. He's a great author. But in his, um, I think it's Victory Over the Darkness or it might be The Bondage Breaker, he talks about his, there's all these statements, who I am in Christ. So like everybody's kind of doing that now, the truth versus the lie and all those things that you've probably read in plenty of books. He was like one of the original people to kind of pull that from scripture. So Chris would drive our little geo, his little geo prism to Home Depot at 5.30 every morning, fr Monday through Friday, and he would have his book and he would read, I am the righteousness of Christ. I am a child of God. 18 months, day in and day out, renewing his mind of who he was. He is not who he did, what he did. He is who God says he is. So that's the biggest piece for him. So if, if there's any of you that you still walk in, in shame, you feel defeated, you just can't oh, seem to let it go for what you've done in your life, check that shame at the door. It, don't, it does not belong with you. And so renew your mind with who you are and who God says you are because you are not what you've done. Your failures don't define you. They just talk about a minute in your life. It's just you, 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 made, a, you made a mistake. Sometimes it may have had really bad consequences, but you just still made a mistake, you know. Um, I've had several ladies ask, uh, how does your husband feel about you sharing the story? He's so mad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whenever I got um, my, book con my book deal, my first book deal, it was um, 2010 when I got the offer, I think, something like that. And then it was fully released in 2011. And I remember before I signed the contract, I mean, he was excited. We had talked about it. And I was like, before I signed it, I was like, are you sure? because everyone's going to know your stuff. And he's preached about his junk to our whole church. And so it's not like it's a secret. But um, anyway, he said, absolutely. And so he just loves it. He loves that we get to help people. I think because we're both so healed. Um, and we just thank God that God's using us. We just kind of have this mindset of we're going to try to be used up as much as we can before we go to be with him. So try to lay it all out on the table so that there's not much of this body left, but when I get that heavenly body, come on somebody and go to heaven. <laughs> so, yeah. And Cindy, what was your relationship with the other woman like, and did she read your book? I think she, so she, I gave her the manuscript before I turned it in. Um, so anyway, back up, I met her at the court hearing to get all the child support taken care of and we wanted DNA testing and everything. Chris was pretty confident. I was pretty confident, but I still wanted a DNA test. I'm just gonna be honest. So met her at the court and she was nice. Her mother was nice. And I asked Chris, this was a painful moment. I still remember we were driving to Memphis um, from Oklahoma City and I remember asking him, what's it gonna be like when I meet her? And I remember him saying, you're going to like her. And I said, he said, I'm sorry, I know that hurts. He said, but she's nice. And I said, okay. And we just kind of stopped. And he was right. Like, she's very friendly. And he didn't choose her because of the way she looked or anything. It was just he met her online, and it was a, an addiction that he, he's just a big mess. But... She and I have worked together. We text each other. I mean, she, we communicate the most. She communicates to Chris when Jack is, you know, being a blessing in disguise. <laughs> but most of the time we're talking, and um, 
she'll say things to me like, you're, you're one of the greatest gifts of my life to me. And so God's just redeemed that. I know a lot of people don't get that. Most people don't get that. And that, that's just, I just thank God that we have a good relationship to be able to co-parent and help Jack. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a, this has been a reoccurring question, too. How long did it take you to fully forgive your husband? Well, I forgave him. Now, don't freak out, but I forgave him immediately. Like, I really did in my heart. Like, I was like, he made bad choices. But you have to understand, I had to continually, no, I've forgiven you. I forgive you with each piece of pain that came along the way. Does that make sense? Forgiveness has never been hard for me, and here's why. I recognize all the things I've done in my life <laughs> that need forgiveness, and I know how much I need the forgiveness of God. I don't think that I'm one of those people who, you know, has it all together, and I am, you know, let me polish my halo. No, um, my poop smells too. So is that okay to say that in, the, in here? <sighs> you guys, I'm from Texas. I can say that. Um, but I just, I know that no matter what the sin is, whether it's cheating on your spouse or lying, it's all falling short of God's perfect standard. So when I see people go, oh, I would never do that, but yet I know how hateful they've been or rude or gossipy or dishonest on taxes, but they would never do this. It's all about consequences. It's not as big of a deal to gossip. You may lose a friendship, but if you cheat on your spouse, you could lose your marriage. I get it. The consequences are different, but it's, it's still just not meeting God's standard. So I just, I just always said, you know what? I, I do forgive you. I knew he was sorry. Um, and even if someone's not sorry, I just give them the benefit of the doubt and I say, bless their hearts, because you know what bless your heart means? <laughs> Do y'all know? You're an idiot. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. So forgiveness is for me anyway. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be trapped in that. I am not gonna be trapped in unforgiveness. And I have a not a great relationship with my oldest brother. Um, and I have just chosen. I actually kind of feel sorry for him. Uh, I don't know if that's <laughs> the right therapy. Aaron, is that okay? Um, but I just, I kind of, I can't change him. And I'm just, I, I'm glad I don't have the mindset he does. So I'm just like, okay. I don't know. Are we done? Yes. Okay. You guys, I, I told Those you I talk a lot. I loved talk all, all the questions. Thank you, ladies. Got so many. I wish I could do more. <laughs> but, um, Cindy, can I pray with you real quick? <laughs> all right. Um, Pray for Cindy. Lord, thank you for bringing Cindy to our church, and thank you for giving her the bravery and boldness to be able to share this story with so many and um, write these books and giving her the wisdom and uh, ability to do it, Lord. And just uh, I just pray that these words would sink in and we you would help us to um, reflect you and be quick to forgive and just pray that you would get Cindy home safely back to her family and um, help her enjoy her visit here in San Antonio. <laughs> And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.